Hey, Retcon Raider here. Today's video is dedicated to Aloise and Per Ingemar Anderson, with special thanks to Mike Spark and Valenrook, who both helped sponsor the series. Thanks for your support, guys. That said, let's get started. And welcome back to Phoenix Point, as we spend some time recovering from our most recent encounters. Now, um, to be fair, although harrowing, we did make it through both encounters intact and uh, picked up a fair amount of resources in the process. Still, it is a pretty big warning that we need to up our game if we want to uh, continue fighting the virus. That said, let's get the A Squad back towards Phoenix Point. We'll give them time to recover before we have them branch out towards, let's say, Australia. As for the B Squad, we'll have them head northwest, set up a scan point, and uh, see if they can set up a new bridge to North America for us. Though we do want to get them back to Player's Handbook 1 at some point. Nice. Okay, we've got a scavenging site. We'll wait until the A squad's freed up before we head in there. And new scan started. We also need to find something to do with all this extra food. The Exarch Blues. Exarch Farhad of Azu Piranu is desperate. A lot of her haven's ordinary machinery is breaking down, but the haven's Anagnostes has taken all the spare parts for his hallowed machines. It's a funny thing, being an Exarch, she tells her operatives. In theory, you're in charge of the haven, but there are a lot of other forces at play, and sometimes you end up having no authority at all. Right now, all I can do is hope you're willing to trade. You know what? We're not going to donate non-vital supplies to the Disciples, but that actually sounds like a pretty reasonable request. Exarch Farhad is relieved. Let me tell you, in some ways things were a lot easier before we joined the Disciples. Well, not easier. Less complicated. But it's never been easy, and at least the Exalted has a vision for the future. Not to discount the importance of hope, but I feel like keeping your settlement in working order is slightly more important than religious doctrine, but what do I know? Anyway, we've got our scan going, so let's knock out this last node and then we'll get our guys back to PHP. The Waters of Life At Arena, our operatives are approached by a young woman. She is uninfected, but has been selected to be taken to the Chamber of Baptism and anointed with the Waters of Life. That is, deliberately exposed to the Pandora virus. The effects of the Pandora virus will then be disrupted by the secret methods of the Disciples, allowing her body to transform, but keeping her mind free. The young woman is the daughter of a high-ranking New Jericho officer. He has sent several messages demanding the conversion be stopped and his daughter returned to him. She has no intention of returning, however, having abandoned New Jericho to seek out the teachings of the Exalted. Still, she is nervous and asks for advice. Wow, okay. I don't think our version of the project would want to get actively involved in this kind of interfaction drama. Not when there's uh, nothing they're directly getting out of it, anyway. 
For what it's worth, I do think she's making a bad decision, but we're not going to kidnap her and piss off a bunch of cultists. We'll let her know what we think and leave it at that. She thinks about it, but ultimately decides to stay. Changing myself scares me, she admits, but I really think we can evolve as a species. It's the only way to survive on this planet. This crazy idea my dad has that one day everything will go back to normal. I know he misses my mom, but the old world isn't coming back, and neither is she. And, I guess, neither am I. Well, that is depressing. You're depressing. I'm gonna go. Construction complete. Ah, there we go. PHB-1 is up. Our disciples of Anu Haven is under attack. Is it now? Ooh, and that's actually in our area of influence, too. Well, it's not the most useful haven, but we could use the reward. Hmm. Yeah, okay. I guess the uh, A squad's up for it. The Instruments of Freedom Our operatives have set down on the edge of an abandoned town. Most of the buildings have been burned out, but there's a bank right in the center that's been broken into. Inside, there's old paper banknotes left lying all over the floor. Before the Pandora virus, they would have been worth millions. Most of the contents of this building, once worth killing for, are useless now. Luckily, our operatives have found a few things that can be dismantled and reused. Hmm. Nice and straightforward. Very post-apocalyptic. Alright, medium threat, decent reward. Just a quick equipment check here. Let's do this. Okay. Looks like we're on a Disciple farm this time. Lots of densely packed cover, <laughs> so even more dangerous than usual. Hostile spotted. Hmm. Ah, Arthron Grenadier. That's actually not too bad, as long as we keep our distance. see what else we've got out here. There's got to be something else. Let's go. Target detected. <laughs> okay. You know, uh, I am hoping to capture one of these things, but they're making themselves some pretty tempting targets right now. Moving out. Aiming. We'll pick them off and then wait for a better opportunity. It 
advancing. One's done. Now for the other one. Moving now. Ready to fire. Nice. I... Oh. Hold on. We've got a Triton. Standard stealth variant. With an Ares assault rifle. Interesting. See what these guys do. We've got a second Triton. And reinforcements. That was quick. I mean, it's probably just more Tritons, but that burst pattern seemed odd. Well, since we know these closer Tritons are carrying Ares assault rifles, we'll go ahead and kill them. Then we'll worry about whatever's going on over there. Make sure this guy can't fade away. Gotta keep going. Oh, well, that works too. And it still puts Mike in position to finish the job. drop. That is a shame. Let's see if we can pick off that Arthron next. I'd like to get that grenade launcher off the battlefield. Watch 
All set. Moving to position. by five. Here. Hold the position. <laughs> That's fine. Not actually all that worried about this haven. <laughs> Okay, so it is the Ares, which means we've got at least two more Tritons. I would like to capture that guy, but I'm not sure we're close enough. Let's just kill him. We'll have plenty more opportunities in the future. And that'll do it. Next we've got this guy. Still hoping for a free assault rifle. No rest for the wicked. Now, he will try to run, so that might change things. Heading out. Nope, not far enough. Acquiring target. All right, at this point, I think we just have those two Tritons behind the fence. But we might also have reinforcements, so we don't want to rush in there. Oh, there's one of them. Yeah, same build as the other two. I'm going. Overwatch. Be right there. I think the peak of the roof should block line of sight. Double time. Hmm. 
Yeah, that's good. Overwatching. It's interesting. They seem to accelerate the animations whenever the opponents are out of sight. Makes sense, I suppose. drop. That is disappointing. Well, I'm pretty sure this is the last guy, so we might as well cap him. No point in letting that mutagen go to waste. Pushing on. Didn't quite plan that out right. Moving to position. Now he runs. But not far enough. Heading out. And we're done. Nice work, everyone. Well, that was a bit on the easy side, but I can certainly live with that. Especially after Episode 8. Nothing spectacular, but overall, not bad. In fact, I think that gives us enough to go build another training center. Hmm. Okay, we'll get started on one new training facility, but... These weird choke points here actually mean we'll have to wait for those two to finish before we can expand any further. Which is fine, I suppose. Maybe we'll uh, go grab a new recruit instead. Okay, I think our B-Squad's actually fully equipped now. Let's see if they can uh, grab a new recruit before we head back to Player's Handbook. Oh, hold on. Ah, it's an armadillo. That is not what we are looking for. Well, I was hoping we'd find a heavy or technician, but I think those cycle every day, so we'll just give it a little time. Let's get you back to PHB. And get some rest. Manticore is repaired, and the A-Squad is back in action. Let's uh, start working on Eastern Asia here. 
We've actually filled out most of the continent at this point. Plus, we do need to establish a bridge out to Australia. Research complete. Siren Autopsy Summary The siren is named after its bone-chilling screech, which has psychic as well as sonic components. It incorporates human and Myriapoda genetic information, resulting in a particularly gruesome monster. However, its mind control abilities are its most terrifying characteristic. In order to understand more about its mechanisms, it is imperative that we capture and study a live specimen. This could be the key to understanding the whole structure of the Pandoran Symbiotic Collective. Genetic Origins 9% Arthropod 8% Myriapoda 23% Human 60% Unknown Function Leadership Abduction Close Combat Mind Control Can directly control an enemy with low will especially after attack by virus or psychic scream. Offensive mutations, acid ejection, slashing blades, viral infection, psychic scream. Defensive mutations, multi-pedal variant is armored. Mobility, agile variant can move rapidly. Weakness, very limited ranged ability. Intriguing. Well, that did not give us access to any new research, so let's have a closer look at those Tritons. Triton Vivisection Initial analyses of the Triton's upper set of arms have shown them to be a recent development. It is notable that once removed, these limbs have the capability of reattaching themselves to the host. Hmm, that actually is pretty interesting. I wonder if the upper arms are actually some sort of mutated symbiotes or parasites. Like a separate creature entirely. Conceptually, it might not be that far from the uh, arms on the new Jericho Technicians. Anyway, let's get back to it. Ah, okay. I guess we're doing this instead. Thank goodness we stopped to rest. Alright, let's see what we're up against here. Heavily armored Crabman Gunner. That's terrible. And a Triton that appears to be completely unarmed. That is strange, but I'm not going to question it. Okay, well, we'll obviously focus on the Crab Man first. That thing's actually strong enough to one-shot most of our soldiers. Five by five. I'm going. Well, I was hoping to uh, tag the gun, but the head works too. Target detected. Oh, we've uh, okay. We've got another unarmed Triton. Moving. Maybe I'm just missing something here, but I'm not sure what those are supposed to accomplish. And there we go. Target neutralized. Hmm. 
would like to capture this guy, but he's bleeding out too quickly. You know what? Bear with me. I'd like to try something out. Okay, looks clear. Channel open. Ah, okay. I was hoping we could stabilize this guy and then paralyze him, but... Looks like you can't heal hostile targets. That's fine. We'll just kill them instead. Actually, uh, I guess it is a bit of a shame to let the mutagen go to waste, so... I'm here. We'll uh, go cap the other guy. I do feel silly doing this, though. Moving to position. On my way. Holding position. I'm not going to chase after that guy. We'll just paralyze this one, and then we'll mop up the rest. Heading out. Receiving loud and clear. I'm here. Moving to coordinates. Div okay, at this point, I think we really just have to worry about reinforcements. Let's get up top here. Let's roll! Overwatching. I'm on the move. Hey, what's up, third unarmed triton? Actually, uh, I take that back. This one has blood-sucking arms. 
so he could theoretically do damage to us. If we gave him the chance. Let's do this. Acquiring target. And that's two free Tritons. Let's uh, keep an eye out for more, I guess. Moving to coordinates. I'm ready. Let's go. Providing overwatch. On the move. Okay, still no reinforcements. And there's our exit on the opposite side of the map. All set. All right, let's uh, scout our route and We'll try to make this quick. I'm going. On the move. I'm not gonna lie, this is weird. You know, if I didn't know better, I'd almost think this was like an I Am Legend kind of situation. Like, the Pandorans are just trying to live their lives and we keep showing up to act like monsters. Moving fast. What's our move? Five by five. Overwatching. Okay, I guess we're done here. We can't all make it out just yet, so we'll set up by the exit. Let's roll!
sprinting. Hey, about time. A little too late to make a difference, though. Moving to coordinates. Here we go. I will be the first to admit that that was weird and anticlimactic, but at least we got level ups. All right, folks. Um, I don't know. Maybe the virus is trying to lull us into a false sense of security again. Regardless, we are past the 40-minute mark, and I did make for two combat scenarios. Honestly, we've made some decent progress today. I'll tell you what, we'll hit the pause button here. I'll take care of some trading off-screen, see if I can pick up a new recruit or two, and we'll pick up here next time. See you then. And remember, although I do love playing Phoenix Point, you can find out more about the game by visiting the official website, the official YouTube channel, the official Discord server, the official Facebook page, the official Twitter feed, or the original crowdfunding campaign over on Fig. Links are in the description. <laughs>